What's cracking, YouTube? Welcome back to Myers Two Stroke RC Garage. And today, guys, today um, I got a video coming. One of the things that I wanted to do uh, today, first, first of all, I wanted to test the new setup on 71 Supreme out back, just do a little rip and see what it's like. I got the cage fixed, all that stuff. Okay, I'm, when I get you guys down here close to the bench, I'll go over all the stuff that I did to it. And then um, I also wanted to ex kind of explain everything, you know, to my new subscribers. I got a lot of I've been having a lot of new subscribers here lately, and I wanted to kind of go over each machine, and uh, I kind of wanted to, you know, tell about them and tell tell the story behind them, and kind of let kind of let everybody know what's going on with my channel. So why don't I get you guys down here closer to the bench, and uh, we'll start going over all the machines, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, I got you down here closer to the machines. I guess I should have said, but uh, the first machine I wanted to go over is this. Uh, I call it the Rocat Hybrid. Um, it's a name that one of my subscribers or a guy who watched my videos, he came up with that name and I thought it fit perfectly. So that's what I've named it. It's the Rocat Hybrid. And what I've done to this is I've taken a Rampage XT and uh, I chopped the, the chassis, the back half of the chassis off, and I made it up a Baja rear chassis to it. And then I developed my own roll cage and everything. And uh, it seems to be... Uh, what the the wheelbase is like? I want to say an inch to uh, three quarters of an inch, maybe maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, uh, shorter than a regular Baja. Um, so uh, it lot. Some people say it when they see it running, it reminds them of the Baja Shorty Q. You know the the Rovin Baja Shorty Q. But uh, yeah, that's what it is. It's the uh, it's the Rocat Hybrid is what I call it. And um, what we've done. What what basically what I've done is I gain you know the best out of both worlds. This is the pretty much the best the best the <laughs> Rampage series could ever be with with the back half of the in my opinion with the back half of the uh, Baja chassis on it because um, you get rid of that four gear setup over here on the gear side. See a Rampage XT has like this funky four gear setup. There's the plate for it, and there's uh, a lay sh there well not a lay sh yeah there's a lay shaft. That goes in here. Then there's an idler shaft, and then there's a another gear that it turns on a different, not a differential. It's a more of a, it's a, it's a diff locker. It it uh, turns a center diff locker, this this outside shaft, and it that then it disperses the power via dog bones to the front and rear differentials. So that's that's how the the Red Cat, um, you know, is was designed originally. And I was always having problems with with these uh, gears always coming loose and there's like 10,000, I'm exaggerating, but there's like so many set screws in there, grub screws, whatever you want to call them. And so I got rid of all that stuff and, you know, you know, we got the rear uh, Baja rear chassis mounted up with the uh, 36 six CC single ring in it. We got uh, 1955 gears and then we got the uh, Roven power pipe is what I call these. And then um, I also kind of wanted to go over a little deal. So I call that the power pipe. You see how that goes. And then this I call the RPM pipe and it mounts as, as, as like it mounts to the engine like this. And what this, what this pipe does is it gives it, it gives the engine a little bit more RPM and you can actually hear it. I don't know how many RPM it is, but you can actually hear it, you know, when you put it on, but what, it, what you do is you suffer low end torque. And that's what I was saying. I think, the video before last when I was when I was ripping this about the power pipe, so that's why I like these uh, these power pipes. So let me see um, if there's anything I'm forgetting. And by the way, guys, uh, this sing, single ring the single ring 36 cc uh, ro Roven engine, it uh, has the 990 rooster tail and velocity stack that used to be on my 40 GT, and then I put that on the Taylor 35. And then I put a WJ-71 on the 35. So I took that carburetor and I stuck it on this. I've ha I had a couple people comment in my all my videos and ask, you know, what all was done to the engine. For the most part, it's stock except for that carburetor and a velocity stack. All right, guys. And don't mind the mess. I really haven't cleaned it up since the last time I ran it. But the next machine up is the, uh, the it's, it's just a Roven Baja. You know, just a pretty much stock Baja with a widening kit on the back. FLM widening kit. Um, you can see the 
the Taylor trans plate, the top training plate that I or transmission plate that I put on it. And that, that's that's one thing that the the Rocat hybrid does hybrid does have. It does have one of those uh, Taylor training plates, transmission plates. Um, so the story behind this is this Baja started out as a 30.5 Baja and it, um, it's kind of graduated from there. And when the, when the Taylor 35, uh, V one first, the first engine, just the piston port engine came out. Um, I, I was one of the first ones to get one and I stuck that baby in this machine and, uh, I ran it for a season and all that stuff. And then, uh, I got it out, what was it, last spring, and uh, I turned it into basically the Taylor 35 Reed, because by that point he had, uh, Mike, Mike Taylor had come up with the Reed case, and um, the Reed case, the Reeds, um, basically everything to make the engine work, and at that time I had to build this, and so it has the V1 cylinder on it, yet still it i don't even think it's v v1.5 it, it could be v1.5 but i think it's just v1 cylinder um but it's still got the v1 cylinder on it but what i had to do is i had to epoxy the intake you see that block off where the carburetor usually is mounted i had to epoxy the intake uh hole or port or whatever you want to call it i had to epoxy that thing shut and you know make so basically i built this engine and um whatnot so that's that's the story of this little thing and this this little uh, taylor 35 reed um when i was building it i you know there's there's some machining that you have to do when you're building it and um i was talking to mike taylor and he told me i had about what what, what do you say 85 or 90 percent of the port i mean the port area so it's it's actually missing about 15 or 20 percent of the port area that I, because I was, I was, uh, what do you want to say? Conservative when I was, when I was porting the stuff. Cause I really didn't, I didn't want to go too far and I didn't want to, you know, I didn't know much about it. So I just wanted to, you know, do, do the best thing I could, you know, the best job I could and still have it, you know, still have it run and, and work and everything. So, um, yeah, I, I was, I sent some pictures to Mike of my progress and stuff and kind of guided me through it and, you know, came out with what, yeah, what I say, 80, 85 to 90, 95%, whatever, uh, percent of the port sur surface or whatever. So that, that's the story behind that. And then it does have the Taylor side pipe on it. And I, I love that pipe. Um, I just love it. Uh, the one thing that people, um, probably are not going to like about mine and mine's one of the earliest ones um the way the stinger comes out because you're going to get a lot of splooge or i can't remember what they call that splooge or spooge i can't remember what it is but that's what that is is it's unburnt oil that comes out the exhaust pipe and it you know goes on your turnbuckle or whatever and your uh steering knuckle and all that stuff but it's no big deal to me i i run these machines I run them as much as I can. I mean, in the summertime, I'm running one almost every day, you know, whether it be this one, you know, my other one or the Taylor 71. Last year, I just ran the Taylor 71, but so it's got the Taylor side pipe on it. We got uh, 1955 gears. I haven't ordered it. What what it needs to run, um, the, what, what are those, 175, the rear, just the regular rear rear tires what it needs on there is 2153s and i just haven't invested in the 2153s yet because i got some things coming to the channel guys and and uh all that stuff so uh and then it's got a potato bar on it and depending on how the one that i have you know come up with and built you know the bebop style is what i call it that wheelie bar right there is going to go back on this machine so you know it'll, it'll look a bit a little bit cleaner with that but um no basically on this machine the whole the whole back end you know i got uh irc uhd cups and bones i mean aluminum transmission housing black bone gears all the way through i mean the the back half or the back the back section of this chassis is just built as strong as it could be built except for i do not have a locker in it so, um, 
that's that one thing I wanted to mention. I'm trying to remember if I'm forgetting anything else. But, uh, yes, this does have the WJ-71 on it. And I did have to see, because I have one of the, well, I don't have a V2 head on it or a cylinder on it and stuff like that. I had to cut my throttle hammer and do some stuff with it. I don't know if you can see it in there. But I had to, I had to cut that hammer and make it so it clears the gas tank. But uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, yeah, and then that one needle down there. It is it is a pain in the you know what to get to the so yeah that high needle in there, um it that it, it is so hard to get to, <laughs> but uh, so yeah that's that's the gist gist of this machine. I mean I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm forgetting. I mean we've got Power HD servo I, and I really like those servos. Um, it uh, I think. Is this a machine that has this? No, this doesn't have the Power HD steering servo. I think the Punisher has that. But no, I'm really happy with these Power HD servos. Uh, I kind of wanted to mention that. Um, but yeah, that's you know that's my Roven Baja with the 35cc Taylor Reed in it that I built and all that stuff. Uh, this thing has so much compression, guys. That's one thing I did want to mention: the compression on it. It feels like it's going to snap that pull cord every time I start it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's just one of the things. I, eventually, I want to get an easy starter on it. But um, So that's just, that's the whole gist of that. Last but not least, we got the Punisher with the Taylor RC 71 Supreme in it. And um, trying to think of, okay, so this started out as a Roven FT360. That's how it started out. And I've slowly, slowly upgraded pretty much everything on it. I don't know if there's anything. I don't even think that uh, that front chassis I know is not uh, Roven. I think is it. I got it from DDM. I can't remember. It's the, the the light and chassis, but it's not Roven. And then uh, I think the only thing that's that's original on it is the back chassis, the back chassis plate, that red chassis plate right there. So, um, so yeah. Well, and I. I'm pretty sure the, yeah, the gas tank brace is um, factory as well. And then this is not the original one, this top plate here on the steering, but it is a factory one. Um, trying to find on this machine, the biggest thing is trying to find the perfect combination of plastic and metal because it, this, this thing is so hard on things, especially when it crashes doing 70. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this, it's no joke. Guys, this is no joke. Um, and then, let's see. As far as this machine, as far as specs, and I won't forget to mention the carburetor this time, but like I did in the last video. But uh, for right now, we're going to go ahead and start with the, that's got the big bore pipe on it. And it is, it's, it's different than the one that comes on like a 40 GT. This is, this is for like the 65 supreme and up or something like that i can't remember the exact you know the exact numbers and all that stuff but uh, as far as gears we're running 27 47 gears and then for tires we have the a kill 195 millimeter super spikes so you add two two gear sets to 27 47 and that's what that's where we're at for for gearing um we got the uh, power hd steering servo in there I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a very good look at that, but, and then we also have the turtle racing steering, uh, servo saver in here. And I had, I had the symmetrical steering, uh, in here guys. And over time it, it just wore out and I didn't like it. And so far, so, you know, so far so good. This turtle racing one's held up for, well, I think I put it in mid season or early season last season. So it's held up really well. And then as far as uh, servo there, we got uh, AGFRC um, throttle servo. And it is, I think, yeah, it's 40 kilogram. But um, so that's what we got for uh, servos. We got 
you know, power HD in for steering. And I, like I said, I'm really happy with those power HDs and I've never, ever had a problem with a, uh, AGFRC. So, um, let me see if I'm forgetting anything else. Those are, um, IRC big bore rear shocks with red springs. Um, definitely need those with a big bore. This engine weighs quite a bit. Um, So, back to this side, what we're going to be looking at right here is that whopping 28 millimeter carburetor because that's that's what this has on it, guys. That's what I've been running since, I think it, it, I put it on close to the end of the season last year. So, um, yeah, so I've been... It's it's it it it's been taking some learning, I guess, so to speak, to to figure out what what it likes. And right now, for the temperature, I was saying in my last video that I ran it, it was like sixty degrees, and that was what it was like the last time. And the tune is really the reason I can tell the tune is rock on because you can't pin that trigger back. You cannot do it because if you do, <laughs> it's going to do what it did in the last video and just destroy everything. So. Uh, why don't we go ahead and take a look at the stuff that I have, you know, that I fixed and we'll start out right there. And I made this little bracket. This was carbon fiber and I busted that. I think it's what four mil carbon carbon fiber. Uh, I busted it last, last roll. And so I replaced it with uh, quarter inch steel. So I made that little bracket and got the wheelie bar all set back up. And I got it, I found a setting that I could go lower. And what I've done is I put the mount on the bottom. See, if you raise it up to the top there, it raises the wheelie bar a little bit. So I put it on the bottom and that is the lowest it could go. I mean, I could probably spin out this turnbuckle, but I highly, I highly anticipate if I turn that turnbuckle out and I don't keep it bottomed out, it'll just, every time it goes to wheelie, it's just going to jam those, that, uh, turnbuckle inside the threads. It'll, it'll just strip out those plastic threads guaranteed. This engine has so much power guys. It's unreal. It is freaking unreal. So let's go on. The next thing I fixed was that I broke that little thing. I don't know what it's called. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the, the name of that specific little piece, but, uh, I know it holds your, uh, front, I can't even think of that. Uh, anyways, I know it holds your front wheel on. And uh, what I did, to, um, I didn't have one of those on hand. And so what I did was I made one out of that. And what that is, this one, yeah, this one's a, I don't know if this is a steering turnbuckle. I can't remember what this one is, but I, I'm pretty sure this one is the rear upper for a Baja. And what I, what I had to do is I had to grind material. See how this one's not round. And that one's round. See, I had to turn a square peg into a round peg. <laughs> so that's what I had to do there. Um, I got that all fixed up. Holds up, ready to rock. Um, and then luckily... I think I even have another extra one of these laying around, but I had an extra truck mount because it, it busted it clear through here and all that stuff. So um, I got that all fixed. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I don't think it really did anything else because I just got done checking it over. That last crash, guys, I don't know if you guys have checked out my, that last video that I put out, but you should go back and check out that last crash. That that uh, car uh, was, yeah, it was about six feet in the air and once it went six feet in the air it didn't touch the ground for over 20 yards that's <laughs> so yeah and it, when it hit the ground it hit hard yeah i mean it it killed the engine and everything so but uh yeah that's that's kind of the gist of this machine i just kind of wanted to you know show you guys what's going on these are just stock roving baja front tires stock shocks got an flm widening kit all the way around on this one this has been, this is my first, this is actually my second Baja style, but this is, this is my first FT and I 
I love this machine and it's, <laughs> it is my favorite. That's why it's got the 71 Supreme in it. So, um, anyways, guys, why don't we get this thing, uh, buttoned up here? I can show you the cage real quick. Okay. So what I did with the cage is I welded a flat piece, piece of plate in there. I just, I completely cut. There was a, a bar going through here and I just completely cut that out and then welded that pat, flat piece of plate in there. Don't mind my ugly ass welds, <laughs> but, uh, and then I just, I, I welded bolts on there and then I screwed these on these, these little posts here. I screwed those on to their, you know, the same height and the, the, the chassis or the, not the chassis, but the, uh, the roll cage is level, you know, looking at it. And then what I did was I welded, um, these little tubes to the bolt. So that's what we got going on there. So yeah, that's the gist of this machine, guys. Um, I hope everybody liked the video. If you liked it, make sure you do all the stuff. Give it a thumbs up, uh, comment, subscribe, share, hit the bell notification, do all that stuff, guys. Um, that way you don't miss anything I upload and you're, you stay in tune with me or in tune with the channel and everything. So um, if you like the video, guys, do all that stuff. And don't forget, we will see you in the next one.